When you look at Brian Vickers' Cup Series career as a whole, I wouldn't call him a total bust. When he wasn't running up front and occasionally winning races here and there, he was doing some of the dumbest things you have ever seen on a racetrack. Despite some of his flaws, he was still able to make a solid career becoming a journeyman driver, scoring three career Cup Series wins with not only three different teams, but also in three different generations of stock car. What a lot of younger fans don't know is that at the beginning of his Cup Series career, he was touted as the next best thing. From 2004 to 2006, Brian Vickers drove for Hendrick Motorsport, and for a variety of reasons, those high expectations went largely unfulfilled, but how did he even get there? In the late 90s and early 2000s, Brian was moving up the stock car ranks with the help of his father, making his Busch Series debut at just 17 years old. Before the 2002 season got started, he survived a scary test wreck at Rockingham. Once he was cleared to race, Vickers did pretty decent in the equipment he was in. As a result, a few of the bigger teams started to take notice, one of those being Hendrick Motorsports. Ricky Hendrick had retired from driving during the 2002 season and was looking for a replacement. Ricky Hendrick convinced his dad to sign Brian Vickers for the 2003 Busch Series season and pair him with crew chief Lance McGrew. Although it took some time in the early parts of the season for Vickers to adjust, Ricky Hendrick showcased that he had an eye for talent. Once the summertime hit, the team began to hit its stride, winning multiple races at IRP, Dover, and Darlington. Along with those wins came a string of consistency towards the end of the year, totaling with 13 top 5s, 21 top 10s, and an average finish of 11.4, all ending with Brian Vickers winning the 2003 Busch Series Championship. While that started some of the hype, you have to put into context that Vickers was a part of the craziest championship battle battle in Busch Series history. Yes, he won fair and square in the end, but by no means during the season was he the most dominant driver. In my opinion, what started his hype in the NASCAR Cup Series was the select starts he made towards the end of the 2003 season. It was already announced he was going full-time in 2004, so it made sense to get him in some select Cup Series starts. And to his credit, he made the most of them, especially in qualifying. In those five races, his average start was 6.2. This included back-to-back -back front row starts at Phoenix and Rockingham. Although he never finished inside the top 10, scoring a best finish of 13th at Phoenix, he performed well enough to have many in the media and fans alike pick him as a preseason favorite to win Rookie of the Year. So by the start of 2004, with a studded rookie class, Vickers was viewed as the best entering the season. His rookie season had a lot of ups and downs, and as you're about to find out towards the end, not just in terms of on-track performance. An excellent day so far for Vickers. Rick Henner told me today, his advice, he told him, when you get shoveled to the back, and you will, slowly work your way back to the front. That's exactly what he's done, and hooked up with Gordon. Jeff Gordon and I uh, teamed up, and we went, for the most part, all the way up to the front together, uh, through the top 10. You know where we run an eight? Yeah, 10 four. Second lap for Vickers. And it's quicker. 2772 puts him on pole. Martin and Stewart were just that little bit lower on He's the racetrack little... from Kane, and they got through. Just a little wee bit. Those are Coil Spring flying down through there. 25, who was having a great run. Let's try this one. Well, if there's two of them involved, and they're both spinning. Yeah. yeah. Chances are there was some contact between them. Question, was the 12 past the 25 on the outside, or was the 25 trying to go by the 12 on the inside? Either way, neither driver's Brickyard 400 will finish as they hoped. He can just hold that down the back straightaway. He should be pretty good through three and four, I would think. He's still oh, gaining. He's it's still getting gaining. better. Brian Vickers, 11 top 10 starts in 2004, second in the rookie points.
Only his second cup appearance here. He started sixth here in the spring. This is going to slow the record right here, yeah. guys. 38, 41, wow. 7, almost the track record. Not quite. By three one thousandths of a second. Boy, you put a whooping on him today. How worried were you, though, when Jeremy Mayfield went and started running? I tell you, I was. When, uh, you know, the, all, the, all the Rays uh, Dodges are, are good. You know, when, when the 9 car went out, the 19, all of them. But uh, they still didn't have anything for the Chevy. Like I said, you don't want to turn the steering wheel. When you turn the steering wheel, like BP was saying earlier, front tires are sticking better. So he went up and hit the outside wall. And then, like I said, you go down and there's nowhere to go. You hit the inside wall. That's how you get both ends. There's the front. It's going to slide directly back across the racetrack right in front of Ouch. AC Mears. Oh, Ryan Vickers, oh, look at that. Wow, that's sliding right across the start-finish line. That's coming off turn four, and somebody did clear him. He thought he was clearing some contact in the rear, Sorry, probably. Guys. I should have just spun it out. Sorry about that. See, Brian gets underneath Robbie Gordon. Tries to save it. It's what we call a tank slapper. And I mean just slam that wall. I can see why he hurt the fence. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to answer any questions. Uh, but I want to I want to say that, uh, you know, last Sunday was a was a sad day. <sighs> it was a sad day for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, obviously I lost a dear friend. Um, they will all be uh, deeply missed for a long time to come until we all get a chance to see them again. What was already a difficult rookie season had just gotten way worse. Not only did Vickers lose his dear friend, but the man who had given him a chance. After the tragedy, Brian Vickers probably didn't feel the same connection to Hendrick Motorsports he once did. Don't get me wrong, Rick Hendrick is arguably one of the best owners to drive for in NASCAR, but he always credited Ricky Hendrick for bringing Brian Vickers in. And after a dismal season that ended with only four top tens and a 25th place points finish, another young prospect in Kyle Busch was set to go full-time in 2005, Brian Vickers needed to improve quickly. That was a hard lick. It really was. And Boy uh, Jr. just tried to move up a little too quickly and caught the back of Vickers this far. Well, I, I think Biffle's damage is pretty much uh, salvage, salvageable. Most of it looked like it's behind the rear tires. Watch the you'll 16. see Biffle, he's up on the outside and the right rear tire's down. He comes around, hadn't hit anything yet, scrapes the nose, but then it goes backwards right into the 25 who doesn't have any place to go. And look at Bobby Labonte. 18 car just barely gets by. Try to fix this car and get it back out there. You see Brian Vickers in the 25 car, but... Here's how it happened. As you see Jeff Green into the wall. Labonte soon follows him afterwards. After a dismal start to the season that saw him as low as 26 in points, Vickers began to turn it around towards the beginning of summer. This started off when he completely dumped Mike Bliss in the Tri-Oval to win the Nextel Open, and a week later followed that up by becoming a serious contender to win the Coca-Cola 600. But it all came to an end once again in the Tri-Oval when he dumped Bill Elliott and caused a big one. A couple of weeks later at Pocono, he had without a doubt the best car there, leading a race high 121 laps with Carl Edwards being his only threat throughout the day. After losing a late battle off of Pit Road, and yeah, they said he lost that one. I don't know where the line's at. Carl Edwards not only took the lead, but later took the victory after a late race caution came out. Vickers followed up that runner-up finish by completely losing it on Pit Road entry at Michigan and hitting the tire barriers. Once again, when he's not running up front, he's doing dumb stuff like this. His 2005 season was an improvement on paper, scoring 5 top 5s, 10 top 10s, and finishing the season 17th in points, but it pales in comparison to the fact that he has yet to score his first career win up to this point and that his teammate Kyle Busch just did. Also, to add insult to injury, he has yet to sit a week inside the top 10 with the team until now. At the start of the 2006 season, he opened up the first two weeks sitting inside the top 10. But this was a flash in the pan as him and the team would revert back to their old ways. Dave Blaney around. And everything stacks up. Ryan 
Vickers dropped to the apron in turn yeah, one. Yeah. And guys, it looks like an engine problem, and the 25 seems to be the Hendrick car that continues to have engine problems. Not not on a regular basis, but this would be about the third or fourth problem they've had. Most of the top guys stayed out. We got Biffle, Carl Edwards, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, several other cars back there making pit stops here. Just 13 laps to go. Don't touch that dial. We're under caution for a crash by Brian Vickers in the back straightaway. Vickers surveying the damage. He is okay. They're certainly close enough. Let's see what happens here. It just appears that that 25 car just gets snappy loose. I mean, he drives out behind his teammate, and when he does, the thing just jumps loose with him. And by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Crash turn four, Brian Vickers. He tickled the wall up there earlier in the race, and now he has knocked the right front off the car. The start of his 2006 season was worse than in his two previous seasons, sitting a season low 27th in points after Charlotte. Meanwhile, his other three teammates are sitting firmly inside the top 10. With a horrible start to the season, you would think Brian Vickers would be on the short leash at Hendrick Motorsports, when in reality, that wasn't the case. Just two days after DNFing at Charlotte, Vickers participated in a Car of Tomorrow test for Hendrick Motorsports. He was still in his early 20s and viewed by some as having a ton of untapped potential. He was going to be in the team's long-term plans until he wasn't. Just a month after that Car of Tomorrow test, Vickers had announced a multi-year agreement with Red Bull and Toyota to drive for them in 2007. It wasn't a case of the team pulling the rug out from under him all of a sudden, he asked Hendrick Motorsports to release him. Probably what influenced this decision was the fact that it wasn't the same driving for Hendrick Motorsports since Ricky Hendrick's passing, and also, Vickers was the lowest priority driver on that team. He felt going to a team where he could be the lead driver would pay off for him in the long run. And he was right. In 2009, they made the chase for the cup in just the team's third season. But before he could switch teams, he had to finish out his final season at Hendrick Motorsports. And oddly enough, he began to turn it around a little bit, getting that team back inside the top 15 in points. While it's still a subpar season by Hendrick Motorsports standards, when you throw in the fact that after that announcement to depart the team, he was being shut out of meetings completely, it's a pretty good in-season turnaround based on the circumstances. Also, you could tell there was a bit of a rift between Vickers and his other teammates, with Jimmy Johnson publicly supporting him being barred from team meetings, and also Jeff Gordon getting mad at Vickers for racing him hard when the chase for the cup started. He literally started this quote with, it's my teammate, but it's not my teammate. Then just continues to pile on him by saying, I think that right now he's in a tough position. He's a guy who is moving on to a new team. He hasn't had any opportunity to win races like the other guys at Hendrick Motorsports. So at this point within Hendrick Motorsports, Brian Vickers is basically a man on his own. You got his teammates publicly saying, we're glad he's being barred from meetings and he hasn't had many opportunities to win races, so this basically sets the stage for what would be Brian Vickers' legacy at Hendrick Motorsports. Kind of an F.U. on his way out the door, if you will. On the final lap in the fall of Talladega race, Vickers and Johnson were going to work together to get past the dominant eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. The entire pack begins to lay back, including Vickers and Johnson, and once they hit the throttle again, Vickers would become public enemy number one. Hey, getting a little wider. There he goes. Junior. Oh, no. I just got in the back of him. I apologize. That's the last thing I want to do is uh, was get into Jimmy and all that take place. But uh, uh, you know when they chop chopped him and Jimmy swerved and and I, I just got him. It's not how I wanted to win it, but but it's nice to get a win for this 25 car. It's been a long time. Um, got a run on the eight and got inside of him and just got hit from behind and it turned me into the eight and then off we went. So um, 
need to see the video. Just can't believe it. I mean, here we go all day long. I had a great chance to make up some points and uh, end up getting crashed by a teammate. This was supposed to be Brian Vicker's day, the one he had waited for for so long. In 107 starts in the Cup Series for Hendrick Motorsports, he finally scored a victory. Not only dedicating this win to the late Ricky Hendrick, but driving in a scheme that was similar to his. But that doesn't get widely remembered. What gets remembered in history is the fact that he not only took out his teammate, but also the sport's most popular driver to score his first career victory. He ended 2006 with a 15th place points finish, five top fives, and nine top tens. While Brian Vickers went on to have a successful career as a NASCAR journeyman, there was a lot left on the table over at Hendrick Motorsports a lot of unfulfilled potential, as well as a ton of race victories that slipped away. What started off so promising ended very bitter. He was supposed to be in the team's long-term plans, but decided to jump ship. Even though he had some nice runs from time to time, performance-wise, however, he is without a doubt, in my opinion, a NASCAR bust over at Hendrick Motorsports. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.